Hello, everybody. I'm Harri Valpala from the Curious AI company. And I'm going to talk to you about how the future AI will look like, what's wrong with the AI now, and how we can fix it, and then what we can do with that. So you must have seen many, many different examples of artificial intelligence. Deep learning, in particular, has been a lot in the, uh, in the news. It's been used for machine vision, machine translation, games, whatever, generating images, all kinds of many very cool uh, applications. And there's a lot of research, there's a lot of money in there, a lot of hype. Um, but this AI that we now have clearly isn't the kind of AI that we were dreaming of. There are clear shortcomings of the AI that we now have. In practice, when you try to apply this, this AI that we now have, you need to have humans. A lot of human work is needed, and you need to have a lot of data. That's the only way to get these deep learning systems um, really working. That's the only way to get good results. So now, why is that? Why is it that we, we need a human in the loop? What is human needed, really, for? Um, I hope many of you have read Daniel Kahneman's great book, Thinking Fast and Slow. So, who has read this book? Who knows about this? Okay, about, say, 30% of people. Okay, so one of the things that he discusses in the book is system one thinking, which is very fast, and system two thinking, which is slow, deliberative thinking. So we, humans, and also mammals in general, we have these two different systems. The first one is a system which, can, which looks very much like um, deep learning. It learns, um, learns slowly, it needs a lot of data, but once it has learned, it's really fast. So it's a little bit like automating some, some actions or distilling knowledge. This is basically what modern-day deep learning is doing in, in most applications. When you encounter new situations, something you've never seen before, your old um, knowledge is no longer going to be enough. In those cases, humans resort to system two, slow, deliberate thinking, which means that we, we can step back and we will notice that, OK, there was something new. What's, what's happening? It's, in, increasingly, um, it's in, um, incredibly important to have that system in order to react to new things. Without that, we would be like reflex machines. And reflex machines is how, how deep learning looks like now. Um, also, um, if you think about it, when you encounter new situations, um, any solution there is going to be creative. So creativity is something that relies on system two. It's something which humans are really good at, and computers not so much, right? So what we are now lacking in AI is this system two, slow, deliberate thinking. That's not the only thing that we are lacking. There's also another shortcoming of um, normal, regular deep learning. And that is that deep learning nowadays is based on learning associations between features. The way deep learning systems perceive their world is, is really through features. You need a human to tell this system what objects are it will not be able to learn it all by itself. It will not be able to learn about um, objects if you only give it pixels, videos, and so on. So um, these two things, you, you can't learn quickly anything new, and that the system doesn't really understand objects. These are what is still taking, uh, keeping AI back. That's why we need the human in the loop. That's why we need so much data. You need to cover every possible case, because you can't rely on the AI 
of coming up with some creative solution. So now let's go a little bit deeper into technology. What is it that this magical system 2 does? For an engineer, it's important to understand how does it work. Otherwise, we are not going to be able to implement it. So what I'm saying is that this system 2 relies on planning and internal models. So we humans have an internal model of how the world works. We have learned that. And when we um, come up with a new situation, we are able to quickly adapt that model. And most importantly, we are using that model for planning. So we can make decisions based on uh, updated knowledge. So for instance, if I learn that the metro is now um, down and I can't use the metro, I will be able to plan myself a new, new route to, to work, for instance. There are some cases where neural networks have been combined with planning. A very popular example is AlphaGo. Uh, how many of you have heard about AlphaGo? Uh, the match against Lee Settle. Okay, many of you, you know about that. So it was a big thing. Um, uh, Go, the game of Go is really difficult. It requires intuition, system one thinking. But alone, that's not enough. You also need planning. And AlphaGo is planning. It is um, able to think about different um, actions, and it's able to learn from scratch. So you don't need to have a human at all to bootstrap it, because it's able to rely on its internal model of the game of Go and planning to come up with creative solutions from scratch. Then its system one is able to learn to automate this. So it's a little bit like what human experts do all the time. Once you have solved the problem enough times, you will learn to automate it. It becomes a habit. You, you just create this intuition. So that's what AlphaGo is doing. So I just said that AI can't do this, and AlphaGo does it. So, so what am I talking about? The trick is that um, what AlphaGo does not have and what doesn't work is that if you try to combine planning with learned internal models. That doesn't work. So the reason AlphaGo works is that the internal model is hard-coded. A human programmed it. So that's why you need a human in the loop there, too. If you encounter a new situation and you are not able to learn, then your system, too, is very limited. You can't really cope with all, all kinds of new situations. So in order to really make good use of System 2, we will need to have uh, learned internal models. Uh, neural networks can learn things, but it hasn't been possible to combine it with planning. Now, we have technology which is doing this. So we are going to have this System 2 capable AI shortly. Other people are working on that too. So that's what's coming up uh, very shortly. Another missing piece which I mentioned was this um, um, neural networks which can understand objects and interactions. Neuroscientists have found um, coding in the brain which is able to um, group features together into objects. That's how our brain is able to perceive, for instance, different people in the audience or understand different objects. And we are able to learn that from just raw sensory input. Nobody in our childhood has had to tell us what are cars and uh, so on, like pointing out cars and drawing the boundaries. We figure out what the objects are. Yes, we, we learn the names from our parents and so on, but, um, and lang language. But still, mostly we learn objects and their interactions just from observing the raw data. This is another technology which we are working on, combining neural and symbolic technologies. So these are the missing pieces, I would argue, something which we still lack, the reason why we don't have the kind of science fiction artificial intelligence that we were promised. This is why AI isn't helping me do all my work. But once we are done with this, 
technology. And as you heard from the intro introduction, we are doing research. We don't have a product now. But we do have an idea of what the product will be. And that's an AI co-worker. A system which is like a little bit like virtual assistant, but much more clever. Something which, with which you can collaborate, just like with your human co-worker, and which will be able to learn and adapt quickly, and which is clever enough that you can allow it to uh, work autonomously, so that it can handle many of the tasks that you need to take care of yourself now. So this is the kind of uh, future that we, we see. We will have these AI co-workers, science fiction AI, if you want, if you will, and they will start collaborating not just with you and other people, but also with other AI co-workers. So that's where this internet of mind comes from. That's how we are going to be able to augment human intelligence. We are still needed, don't worry. You are not going to be out of work. Um, these, these systems, we believe, will be your, uh, your helpers. Um, and um, with, with this kind of system, you can increase the, the potential of humans manifold. So, welcome to the future. Thank you. <laughs>